Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to set theory. What is a set? In simplest terms, a set is a collection of objects. So, say we've got these lovely four markers. You can put them together and say, in addition to the four markers, there is something which is the set of the four markers over and above all of them. One nice little individual bundle. Now, it doesn't have to be just markers. I could have, say, markers and a fork. Put them together. Now I've got a set. That's really all you need to know about what sets are beyond a few constraints on how they work. And in particular, notation. Notation is going to be the key thing, just as in our previous video, which is why I'm going to be talking about it here today. Sets are defined by their members. So, if I have these four markers, I can make many different sets containing them. So for instance, there's the set that contains all of them. And this is not the same set as the set that doesn't have the red one, because this set doesn't have the same members as this set. We can also talk about a set that doesn't contain anything. This is a special set. It's unique. It's the only one that doesn't contain anything, and it is called here we have a definition, the empty set. There are two different ways that it can be represented. One is with this zero that has a slash through it, so nothing, null. But we also will sometimes want to indicate sets by writing down all of their members in a list between these lovely curly brackets. So if you've got two curly brackets with nothing in between them, then that is the set that doesn't have any members. Now, what sets are is not really what we're interested in. That's metaphysics. We don't do metaphysics. This is logic. What we are interested in are relationships that sets can have to each other, and also relationships that individual objects, such as these markers, can have to the sets that contain them. So here we've got more notation. The first definition is the definition of set membership. If lowercase x, which is just standing for whatever object whatsoever, for instance, this marker, is an element of a set gamma, remember capital gamma from our notation video last time, perhaps it's the set that contains the orange marker and the yellow marker, then we'll write that x is a member of gamma. So this is the membership relation. If it's not, then we will write that membership relation with a slash through it. Now, notice this, because this is a technique that will come up in notation in the future. If you want to negate something, if you've got some particular relational symbol, you can negate it by drawing a slash through it. We also have a definition that has to do with the relationships between two sets. So that is the relationship of subset. Say that we have two sets, gamma and delta. For instance, gamma is the set that has the orange and the yellow marker, and delta is the set that has the red, orange, and yellow. Then gamma, just these two, is a subset of delta, these three, if every member of the smaller set is also a member of the bigger set. So when that is the case, we have this horseshoe-shaped symbol to indicate the subset relation. Now, if there is, if every member of this set is also a member of this set, but the bigger set has something that isn't in the first one, so namely this red marker here, then we say that the smaller set is a proper subset of the bigger one, and we write this. So you'll notice the difference between this symbol and this symbol is the lack of the line underneath. What you can think of, the little line underneath, is it's like the line in the standard identity symbol that you get in mathematics. So for instance, the set that contains these three markers is a subset of the set that contains these three markers. Because, and here we come back to what I've talked about in a previous video, the, the importance of definitions. If every member of this set is also a member of this set, then it's a subset. So subsets can either be proper subsets 
or they can be identities. Now suppose that I've got two different sets, one that has the red and the green and one that has the orange and the yellow. I can take these two sets and I can put them together and form a new set and this set is called the union. So the two set, the union of two sets gamma and delta, which is written with this little cup-shaped U, is just the set that contains anything that is a member of either the first set gamma or the second set delta. Suppose I've got this set here, red, orange, and yellow, and I'm not colorblind. This is green, red, and yellow. And then I've got this set here, which has green and orange. So set one, set two. You might notice that there's an element that occurs in both of them, namely magic green marker. If we have two sets and we want to find out what are the members, or we want to pick out what are the members that occur in both of these sets, that is the intersection. So the intersection of two sets, gamma and delta, and here we have the upside down U, so union, U, intersection, opposite of U, and therefore upside down U. Logicians love these little mnemonics. Your notation will be a lot easier to learn if you can think of what are kind of either very straightforward ways of forming notation or very obscure ways of forming notation. One of these two is probably the answer, and this is why, uh, why logicians like notation. Anyway, back to intersection. The intersection of two sets, gamma and delta, written gamma, intersection delta, is the set that it contains anything that is both a member of gamma and a member of delta. So we can take two sets and we can put them together and form a new set. We can take two sets and we can say what occurs in both of them. But we can also take two sets and essentially say, okay, what is the difference between the set that contains red, yellow, and green and the set that contains red and green? Well, the answer is yellow because you take these two and you put them back together and you get your original set back. This is a notion of set difference. So here we've got two different ways of doing notation. The set difference between any two sets, gamma and delta, either written with this slash or with hearkening back to arithmetic, the minus sign, is everything that is a member of gamma and not a member of delta. Now, if gamma is in fact a subset of delta, so every member of gamma is also a member of delta, then the set difference between the two we call the complement of gamma with respect to delta. So that's everything that's in delta that is not in gamma. Now, here we have some examples. So as I said, you can indicate the membership of a set by putting the elements of the set between these curly brackets. It's easy to just use lowercase letters. So we've got one set that has A, B, C, X, Y, and Z, and then we've got one set that has just A and B, A, B, and C, and another that has X, Y, and Z. So now you can see examples of all of the different notation and definitions that I've just given. You can take the union of the two sets, so if you take gamma and delta, well, everything that's in delta already was in gamma, so you just get the same set back. But, say if you take delta and theta, you put those two together, oh, and look, what you get is just going to be identical to gamma. The difference between gamma and theta is a, b, and c. The, the intersection of gamma and delta is a, b, and c. And then if you take the intersection of delta and theta, they have no members in common, and so that just gets you the empty set. So here's a, just a very brief example of language that we use when it comes to sets. Union and intersection are the most common that we will be talking about. But the important thing is sets are defined by their members. Sets have relationships to each other. And we'll be coming across more funny notation. And I will remind you what each of the pieces of notation mean when we come across them again in future videos. That is your introduction to set theory. Cheers. See you next time.